We're doing a series on knowing God. First, we did a message on the knowledge of God. Then, we did a message on the power of God. Those have to, those two have to go together. Because sometimes we know what to do, but we don't have the power. And sometimes we have the power, but we don't know what to do, and vice versa. So only God is all wise, all powerful, never makes a mistake. <clears throat> I don't know how much TV you watch. I've noticed in recent months there, it, it has become a trend among broadcasters to present God in whatever light or definition your background or your mind can conceive. It's part of the reason I am doing this. I am presenting to you the God of the Bible, the only true God who cannot be known except through the Lord Jesus Christ, the Christ of God. So, this morning, <clears throat> the logically next one on my list, and I have a pretty good list. Obviously, it is an inexhaustible subject. I mean, we can go from now on. Uh, who can know the Lord? We can know about the Lord. We can. There's a lot in the Bible. This is God's book of self-revelation to us. But folks, we'll be in eternity studying and learning. But this morning, the holiness of God. This is a subject that I feel very strong about. Much that is presented to our modern religious world about worship is anything but that. Worship is based on knowledge of the Bible. Worship is based on quietness. Of course, it, from this side of the desk, I, I get constant I wouldn't call it pressure, but uh, why don't we have a band? Well, we're not going to do that here. We don't need a band. God says you worship in spirit and in truth. You do not need somebody up here to excite you to get into a mood to, to worship. That's fleshly. Worship is spiritual. And by the way, how can you worship a deity you do not know? So, with considerable pathos this morning, the holiness of God. My verse uh, to introduce this is uh, Revelation 15.4. Revelation 15.4. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy. Wow, what a verse. Who shall not fear thee? We're talking here all. Respect. Bowing to deity and holiness, not a human, I'm scared of something. No, who shall not fear, honor, bow, worship, be in awe of who? O Lord. And glorify thy name, for thou only art holy. Here is cause, 
God affect fear response glorifying the Lord only God is independently infinitely immutably <coughs> holy actually no human being should be called holy I think having said that what would immediately come into your mind the leader of the Roman Catholic Church the holy pope no he's not he's not a pope and he's not holy and he is not a mediator between the Lord and you and I in our sins. There is one God and one mediator, the man, Christ Jesus. Only God is holy. In Scripture, he is frequently called the Holy One because all moral excellency is found only in God. First John 1 5, God is light. And in Him is no darkness at all. God is light. Moral, among other things, perfect. Moral perfection. God is light. And in Him is no darkness, no sin, no spot, no negative, anything. Holiness is the very excellency of His divine nature. Exodus 15, 11. He is glorious in holiness. He is holiness. He is glorious. Glory and holiness go together. God's holiness stands at the very antithesis to all moral defilement. That's the reason sinful man cannot come into the presence of God. Second Chronicles 20, 21, that they should praise the beauty of holiness. <clears throat> Power is God's arm. Omniscience is God's eye. <clears throat> Mercy <clears throat> are God's vows. Eternity is his duration, but holiness is his beauty. <clears throat> it's God's holiness, which renders him lovely to those of us who know him and worship him, uh, those of us who have been delivered from the bondage of sin and brought into the light of the gospel and our Lord. Holiness is his beauty and we worship the most often used name of God in the Bible is his holy name. God is called his holy name in the Bible. That's a, that's a title, that's a name, that's a description. That, that title is used more often when addressing God than any other title. His holy name. It's a great title, the greatest title of honor. What is celebrated at the throne where God sits right now for all of eternity, even right now while we're here and will be forever, what's celebrated before his throne is his holiness. Isaiah 6.3, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. There are good angels who minister to us. They're God's messengers. There are evil angels. We call them demons who fell in Satan's rebellion. And there are enemies. But there is a third class of angels called seraphims. And their whole job is to be around the throne and declare and promote the holiness of God continually. And these seraphims are the ones that are crying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. God himself said in Psalms 89.35, Once have I sworn by my 
holiness, by that purity, by that perfection, by that inevitable Godhood, what God swears will be. His holiness is a fuller expression of himself than anything else. The attribute of God's holiness runs through the rest of the Bible like a golden thread. Psalms 27, 4 says, the beauty of the Lord, but then Psalms 19, 3 says, the beauty of holiness. God and holiness are one. Holiness is the splendor of every attribute of God. His justice is a holy justice. In other words, his justice is pure, right? His wisdom is a holy wisdom. Uh, everything God knows is pure and holy and right. His power is a holy honor. God does not have temper fits. God's wrath is a holy wrath. God's anger is a holy anger against unrighteousness. The power of God is a holy earth. The truth of God is holy truth. To be revered, obeyed, bowed to, and done. His name is holy. Psalms 103.1. Let me break that down just to a few practical applications and lessons to our lives. I must begin, I do want to say this because we have children here and, and uh, uh, what they hear in other circles, like in our schools and other places, is not always the truth about creation. God's holiness is manifested in His works. God doesn't do anything except it's perfect, right, and good. We do not have the God of the Bible is not a capricious, angry, a misfit of a God that has to be appeased with blood offerings or anything else. God is a holy God. It's manifested in all His works. Psalms 145, 17. The Lord is righteous in all His ways and holy in all His works. And by the way, that's true whether we like it or not. That's true whether we understand it or not. Because only excellency can come from a holy God. When God made the world and when he got done making it in six days, what God said about creation is easier to believe than what we are expected to believe about evolution. But when God had finished it, God said in Genesis 1.31, he saw everything that he had made and what? It was very good. That's what you expect from the Holy God. He made man righteous. But man has sought out many inventions. The angels and Jews before they fell were holy angels. Even Ezekiel, uh, even Satan in Ezekiel 28, 15 was a holy angel before the fall. That's all God can do, can make. He is holy. Jesus himself on earth, one of the ladies said, he hath done all things well. I want you to look for a minute and think for a minute about God's holiness, how it's manifested in his law. God gave ten. They call them the Ten Commandments. Man has since added multitudes and multitudes and multitudes and multitudes of thousands. And we can't keep them. We couldn't keep the first ten. Jesus got them down to two. Love God, love your neighbor. Couldn't keep them. But man just keeps adding and keeps adding and keeps adding and it's not working. The problem is we've deviated from God's Perfect, pure, <coughs> holy law. And God uh, forbids any form of modification of His law. 
The big thing right now is uh, uh, the uh, the supposed uh, liberty of sexual deviation from God's standard. God says you can't do that, but we're determined we're going to do it anyway. The law is holy because a holy God gave it. The, the commandment is just because a just God gave it. The, the word of God is good because a holy, good, just God gave it. Don't neglect your Bible. It comes from the holy God. It is your word. It is his word for you to live by. And he'll bless you if you will. Don't deviate from it. Then let me move very long, uh, 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 along very quickly and make this observation. There was a point in time when God's holiness was manifested on earth. And I'm talking about the cross. Yes, the cross. <coughs> the worst travesty in human history. Man at his worst. God at his best. Yes, at the cross. The atonement is God's greatest display of his holiness and his hatred of sin. A holy God must hate sin or he would not be holy. None of the judgments of God, past, present, and future, Declare God's holiness as does the cross. When Jesus on the cross said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The answer is a holy, righteous God, a sin-hating God, could not look at his own son, who at that moment was bearing the sins of mankind. God. Holy had to look away. And not until Jesus said it is finished could look, could God look back. Which obviously I must say next to be true to the text. <clears throat> it is because our God is such a holy God. Not only does he hate sin, he must. Can you imagine living in a world where there are no standards? And by the way, we in America are quickly moving. There is a verse uh, that I constantly think of as I, as I watch the news. Uh, and uh, in those days, there was no king in Israel, and every man did that which was right in his own eyes. And that doesn't mean they didn't have a king. Yes, they had a king, but he was a king he was, who was like many of our politicians today. As long as their pockets were full, they didn't care what laws they passed. And, and we're quickly moving a society uh, which, which is the outcome <coughs> of humanism that what I do is right because I'm a little God, a little G God. No, God must hate sin. Proverbs 3.22, the froward is an abomination to the Lord. And Proverbs 15, 26, the thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to God. God forgives the sinner, but not the sin, because Christ took your sin to the cross. So God gave Christ to bear our sin. I want you to think about this a minute. For one sin, God banished Adam and Eve. Thank you. Oh, amen. Good wife. <laughs> Good water. Not enough, but good water. <laughs> For one sin, God banished Adam and Eve from the garden. Why? He's holy. For one sin, the posterity of Ham are cursed. 
For one sin, Moses was excluded from Canaan. For one sin, Elijah's servant was smitten with leprosy. For one sin, Ananias and Sapphira fell dead in the church. You know why? Because a holy God says the wages of sin is death. The truth of divine scripture proves God's holiness. Only a holy God would tell the best of man and also the worst of man. Never was a man with the millions of books that have been written that would tell the truth in a book like the Bible tells the truth in a book. You know why? God's holy. Psalms 515, thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Psalm 7 and 11, God is angry with the wicked every day. Let me give you one more. Because God is holy, acceptance with Him on the grounds of creature doing is utterly impossible. There never was a human being good enough to make marriage for a head with God. Because we're sinful creatures. As a matter of fact, here's what God says about our best ability, talking about the religious word. Uh, Isaiah 64, 6, all our righteousness, righteousnesses, are filthy rags. I hope you're not here to make headway with God, because being here does not make headway with God. Bowing at the feet of Jesus makes headway with God. For by grace are you saved through faith. It is the gift of God, not works, lest any man should boast. That which holiness demanded, grace has provided in Christ Jesus our Lord. Every poor sinner who has fled to Christ for refuge, stands, Ephesians 1, 6, accepted in the Beloved. Three applications, and I'll be done. Because God is so holy, and by the way, I've done a lousy job. There's no human being can do this text justice. Can't be done. I have begged and begged and begged and prayed and prayed and prayed this week for the Holy Spirit to make this sermon live to you because there's no man can do this. So number one, because God is holy, utmost reverence becomes our approach to Him. The Lord is in His holy temple. Let us bow before Him. I know we have our social time. Today we're going to eat and have our social time. But folks, there is a time for respect for God. And this hour is that time. We're here to worship this holy God. Holiness becomes us all. Bowing, humility, reverence. We're, we're, we've become such an irreverent society. Everything that's holy is mocked and everything that's vile is lauded. There's one place that our words ought to be few and our silence long. This is that place. Second application, because God is holy, we should desire to be conformed to Him. First Peter 1.16, be ye holy, for I am holy. First Peter 1.15, in all manner of holy deportment, we should take on the personality, 
the temperament, the disposition, and the characteristics of our Father. And our Heavenly Father is holy. And finally, I'm going to close with this verse, because this sums it all up. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 Sanctify you holy, your whole body, your whole soul, and your whole spirit be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. By the Spirit of God within the believer, by the Holy Scriptures, by the fellowship of the saints, and by on our knees in our private places, we can be conformed to the image of Christ. Never perfect in this life, but we can be conformed to the image of Christ. Be ye holy is the charge, for I am holy. I see so much disrespect of the religious world in our own nation. We come to church dressed just like we go to the ballpark. My goodness, would you go meet the President of the United States like that? I don't think so. I'm not saying get all gussied up, as they say, but folks, some form of representation that we are in the house of God. We are here to worship in holiness, in spirit, and in truth. Our God, who sent his son to die for us, deserves the honor. Amen? Be ye holy, for I am holy. This is the God of the Bible that I bring to you this morning. May the Holy Spirit of God burn this subject deep into our hearts and our minds and live accordingly because, among other things, the church, that's you and I, are to represent this great God well in the community and on the job and in the school where we live. Amen. Amen. Would you stand, please? <coughs> With every head bowed, every eye closed. I know it gives me a lot to think of today. It's one of those subjects that, but by the help of the Holy Spirit, we can't even begin to grasp it. But I really want us to learn about God. We know Him as the Lord, that's the most common name today, but that is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the Great I Am, the Great Jehovah. Lord God Almighty, the Holy One. Do you know Him? Have you received Jesus Christ as your Savior? If not, I'd like to help you with that. In a minute, we're going to sing. I'm going to pray. We're going to sing. If you want to step out and come, I'd like to help you. If you need to follow the Lord, believers baptism. If you need to the Lord tells you, this is the church, I want you to be a member of what, whatever. You're responding not to a man, you're responding to the will of God, this holy God, in your life. Our Heavenly Father, I pray for this invitation. I pray for the close of this service. I pray that this is an hour that would have brought honor to you. Yes, help the people. Be a blessing, be an encouragement bring honor and glory to your holy name.
Help us, Lord, that we worship you when we come here in spirit and in truth. This I ask, this I pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. We're seeing number, number 326.